Hello my friends and welcome, this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to the southern front lines near to Robotina and Novoprokopivka because there is the huge fight between Russian and Ukrainian forces just over here. The Ukrainian army went on a counterattack or on attack, but Russia fired everything they have in Novoprokopivka and nearby to stop the Ukrainian offensive. Also, the Russian army is now pushing from Kapani. They accumulated some of the forces in that village and nearby, and now they want to regain the previously lost territories. Before Ukraine got the attack vector towards Kapani and one more between those two villages, but now Ukraine went on defense in this area. Yes, the gray zone moved a little, but mainly Ukraine now is repelling the Russian counterattack. Also, Ukraine has the attack vector towards Novopokrovka village in attempt to expand this bridgehead. So far, the attack is unsuccessful, but Ukraine tries to reach more ground. Well, the main hotspot now is in Novoprokopivka. Let me show you the other source. So here we have the main battle on the south. You can see that Ukraine moved in with some artillery fire, but Russia responded with huge fire from their artillery. They use lots of the surveillance to spot our forces and unfortunately target them. And also they have quite a successful attack in this place with their armored vehicles and tanks. Hopefully Ukraine will be able to proceed from Robotina and able to secure the Robotina village because it was really hard to get control over it. Also the fight was recorded over here and there are two of the Ukrainian attack vectors just in this area. Here you may check the original information on the Twitter from the military expert who posted those military maps. And I would say that usually he got the truthful information that is later on confirmed by the other sources. So far it's hard to say of who is prevailing in this place, especially near to Robotina and Novoprokopivka. Russia deployed their paratroopers, the most capable forces they currently have, so maybe they are able to withstand the ground in Novoprokopivka but they also have losses. Just recently I showed you the new cemetery especially made for the Russian paratroopers. There are many events now happening in Avdivka, the main hotspot from all of the front lines. But before we go to it, let me tell you about the sponsor and the partner of my channel. It is the Atlas VPN. They came out with a Black Friday deal, which is still valid, that was made especially for my followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium with a huge discount for just $149 per month plus 12 months extra. For Atlas VPN, I trust the most. Also, Atlas VPN grants me the full access to any kind of the series on the Netflix streaming platform. So I don't care about the government restrictions any longer. And sometimes I check the enemy side social media and for that I also use the Atlas VPN. You can basically change your virtual location to any point in the world. And Atlas VPN is so fast that you will never feel the difference whether it's on or off. And now my friends, please check out my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium with the Black Friday discount just for $149 per month plus 12 months extra. It is a very rare opportunity to get this premium product for such a low price. And this deal is time limited, so hurry up to join the club. Alright, and now the main hotspot from all of the front lines of Divka. The fight is ongoing for Stepova village. Here Ukrainian army prevails. Russia again tried to attack Stepova village, but was totally ambushed. They used couple of the vehicles and Ukraine had no any problems in ambushing the Russian convoys and attacking forces. And now instead of Russia, Ukraine went on a counterattack just on the south from Stepova directly to Krasnohorivka. Hopefully we're gonna push Russians out from this village. So Russia wastes enormous resources in Krasnohorivka in their attempts to get more ground, but so far unsuccessfully. Yes, they reached this railroad, but after it they have no success. And here we have the military map, so this Russian attack attempt failed, so you can see the burning Russian armored vehicle. And here Ukraine goes on the counterattack towards the railroad in attempt to cross it 
to go to this part, maybe trying to encircle the Russian forces based in this area. Ukraine used lots of the fire from the artillery systems. All of that was filmed and later on published on this resource. Also, Ukraine uses some of the surveillance drones to find out the Russian positions in the area, later on again using artillery or FPV drones to target Russian bases or armored vehicles or infantry. Lately, Russia started to use lots of the infantry forces without the backup from the infantry vehicles or the tanks. That is why most of the drone videos include the images of the demolished Russian infantry. That's why I am unable to show them to you on this platform. For more data, please go to my Telegram channel. Let's continue with this place. So Russia also has many of the attack vectors because they are unable to cross uh, the railroad to Stepove. They start to attack the northern part of this area, trying to move to this road over here. Well, Ukraine repelled all of the Russian attacks on the northern part. Let me show you the other image. So here are those Russian vectors and they were unable to get more control over the ground. And this is the attack that I showed you before that was totally repelled by Ukrainian army. Ukraine again uses artillery fire and many of the drones to target the Russian vehicles, well, to spot them at first and then target. We also have the confirmation from the Deep State military map source that Ukraine goes on attack from Stepova village towards the Russian positions near to Krasnogorivka. By the way, this video I showed you yesterday. And there is also the FPV drone operation on the northern side from Krasnogorivka, again confirmed by the same source. So definitely Ukraine is going on counterattack in this area. Those are the good news. So in Krasnogorivka everything is more or less positive for Ukraine. Going to the industrial part of Avdiivka city, here Russia still struggles to get uh, this part under full control. However, the gray area expanded already beyond this place. So this is the area. This part is still under Ukrainian control, but Russians are moving in mostly with infantry forces. However, they also use some of the tanks not as much as usual, not as many as usual. And the Ukrainian army unfortunately left the positions over here, retreating to the residential area on the northwest from this place. There were some of the Ukrainian defense lines before, but Russia unfortunately penetrated them. So for Ukraine, it's very crucial to build a new defense line somewhere in this place. And I think that terrain might help with that because there is the small river and the elevation is basically different. So let's go to the 3D map over here and you may see that there is the river. I told you probably about it already. Also, there are a couple of the craters that might be used for the defense and also the forest might help to hide our defense lines or build the defense lines, the trenches, just in it. So Russia will obviously move further because they accumulated lots of their resources and they already penetrated the main Ukrainian defense lines, which were located in this industrial part. So I expect them to move forward towards this place, but not beyond this river for now, at least for this winter campaign. Probably something might change during the springtime. So in all of the Avdivka region, personally, I think that it's the most vulnerable part of the city. And unfortunately, it's located very close to the city itself. About the southern part, recently there was no any movement from this place. For now, the weather still allows the action in this place, unlike on the south in Kherson Oblast, where the weather deteriorated to the very poor one with lots of the snow. So here's the video from the Ukrainian positions somewhere on the south. So you can see it's the snow storm or something like that. And those are the roads in Odessa region. So even ambulance is being evacuated by some of the tracks. And it's very difficult for our drivers. Some of them just stack on the highways in this weather obviously there will be no any movement on the front lines for the soldiers from both of the sides it's very important to keep warm just 
in those conditions. Later on, obviously, it will be much warmer. Now the sandstorm occurred on the southern part and it also moves to the eastern side of Ukraine. The snow now covers the central part of Ukraine. That is why there are some of the movements on the eastern part of the front lines. But I expect uh, no any change in the front lines in Kherson for at least three consecutive days and later on maybe on the eastern part of Ukraine too. But the main storm is happening in the Black Sea just in Crimea with the waves up to 9.3 meters high. That's around 30 feet. Some call this thunderstorm the biggest ever recorded. And even the part of the highway was flooded between Yevpatoria and other cities. All of the beaches on the western side of Crimea were flooded, together with the Russian trenches, defense lines and dragon teeth, which were built by the Russian army before this summer, to somehow resist against the possible Ukrainian landing operations in Crimea. So they have to rebuild everything from the scratch again. Many of the power lines in Crimea were severely damaged and half of the population of peninsula lost the electricity. The kaboom was reported in the Russian city of Smolensk. Let's watch this video filmed by this girl. Definitely there is the ground kaboom recorded on the video, but Russia as always says that they've shut down the drone in the skies. Smolensk is far away from the Ukrainian border, but not far away from Belarus. Also, the last night there was the attack in Moscow again. All of the commercial airfields were closed in Moscow and it was reported that there was the drone impact right into the residential building. No one suffered, no casualties reported. Russia again used the electronic warfare to deflect the trajectory of the drone, in this case right into the building. The big Russian factory just exploded not far away from Chelyabinsk. It was the huge kaboom over there. Russia uses this factory to repair their damaged tanks and also modernize them. For example, all of the T-55s and T-62s were modernized in this one. Definitely a very beautiful kaboom and here, I'm not joking, probably someone smoked at the wrong place because this factory is located really far away from the Ukrainian border. This is Ukraine and this is the factory. I think it's more than 1,800 kilometers away from Ukraine. We don't have the tools to reach that far from our border. Russia continued to use the Lancer drones. Uh, I took this video from TikTok as you may see. So those are the drones that are targeting the Ukrainian tank T-64 Bulat. Luckily tanks survived two of the attacks at the same moment. One of the drones went into the engine compartment partially damaging the engine itself, however tank was able to leave the position on its own power. Those meshes helped a lot to prevent the severe damage of the engine. Luckily tank was evacuated from the place, so one went over here and one went right on the top. The tank is fully repairable and will continue to serve in Ukrainian army. And those are our guys somewhere on the south with ATV vehicles. The Ukrainian BMW rocket artillery system consists of the car, it's I think E38 BMW, with the rocket attached just on the top. It's the first time I see this kind of the construction, but it works, it fires the missiles that are able to reach quite far for the distance. The precision is not that good, but still. Also, Ukraine is using the sidecar motorcycles, by the way, this is the Ukrainian-made Dnipro, with attached machine gun to target the drones. This video was filmed a couple of days ago. Russia lost the self-propelled Akatsa artillery system somewhere on the south. It is said that Hymers was used to target this Russian artillery. Well, I'm not sure about it, but the main thing that this system was kaboomed. And those are the remains of the Akatsa system, basically nothing left. One more photo of the Abrams tanks was shared today in the internet. 
again with comments that this tank was spotted near to Kupensk. Russia has started to use the special electronic warfare systems to create the distortions on the satellite images. This is the Sebastopol harbor, so they're really afraid that we're gonna spot their vehicles or ships or submarines in this area to target them lately using the cruise missiles. They also tried to hide the Taganrog air base but not as successful as with Sevastopol. Ukraine is not only using the FPV drones to target the Russian positions but also those small remote control baggies to go just inside the Russian trenches. Also there are some thermal sensors so if the Russian soldier gets closer to this thing it just explodes. Our guys also use those specific remote control vehicles to mine the area remotely. Yes, we cannot dig the mines under the ground, but still it creates some of the interference for the Russian armored vehicles and tanks. We have an expert opinion from Viktor Orban about the situation or about the war in Ukraine, it's better to say. Let's listen to him. That was the strategy. We finance the Ukrainians uh, fight and die. Where we are now. It's obvious that the Ukrainians will not win on the front line. There is no solution on the battleground. Russians will not lose. There will be no political change in Moscow. This is the reality. Quite a short speech, I would say, and I may also comment on this topic. So he says that we finance the Ukrainians fight and die. Hungary doesn't provide any kind of the military support for Ukraine, so who we? Maybe he means the European Union, but he's not participating this deal. Hungary still supports Ukrainian refugees, many things for Hungary about it, but speaking about the military support, Hungary just blocks everything. So we finance is kind of a strange meaning he used. The Ukrainians fight and die, obviously, because it is war. If Russia takes Ukraine under control, nothing Ukrainian would left. No language, no Ukrainian culture. That is why our guys defending our country and we as civilians help them to do so. Also our partners, our allies provide munition for Ukrainians to fight for its own country, for its identity. Otherwise, Russia might use Ukraine as one more military power to attack the other countries, including the NATO countries. Do you want that, Orban? Again, if we check the ratio for the losses for Ukraine and for Russia, Russia loses a lot compared to Ukraine. Yes, they have more resources, but still, their strategy is very stupid on the front lines. Where we are now? Where are we now? It's obvious that Ukrainians will not win on the front line. Well, unfortunately, he is partially right about it. Ukraine now, if we speak about now, has no sources or resources to continue the counterattack and the big assault attempts to get back our territory. The plan was to go to Crimea, obviously it stalled. And Orban is using this current state to say that he was right or he is right. But if we take not long time ago, 2022, then Ukraine liberated 50% of all of the captured territories by Russians. My friends, it was the great success last year. Yes, we want Ukraine to win always, but sometimes it's better to concentrate on defense, accumulate enough resources and then move ahead with different strategy. Again, this war is about resources. Who has more resources? wins. Now Russia increased the production of the weaponry, they received the ammunition from their allies, many more compared to Ukraine, that's why they may attack on some of the directions, for example in Avdiivka. They want to take the initiative on the front lines that belong to Ukraine since the liberation of Kherson in 2022. There is no solution on the battleground. Indeed, right now there is no solution because again Ukraine is out of the levers or the tools or you may call them resources to deoccupy all of its territories. Now we see mostly the standstill situation on the front lines, but it will not last forever. At some point one of the sides will prevail, hopefully it will be Ukraine with our allies' support. Russians will not lose. Here I'll put the big question. 
Honestly, I am sure that they will finally lose. But the loss will be not the classical one. As I told you, Ukraine will not go to Moscow taking Kremlin. No, Russia will be formatted or reformed, and that is their loss. And the war in Ukraine will be one of the main triggers for the Russian collapse. Unfortunately, Ukraine will have to spend lots of the time fighting till that moment. We're gonna see what happens after the elections in the Russian Federation. I expect some interesting event. And the Russian regime is not that robust as many think. Prigozhin showed that the Russian regime scared even of the small group of the armored men. So there could be more forces who would like to take the power in that way. There will be no political change in Moscow. Yes, for the nearby perspective, there will be no change. But for the long-term perspective, there will be. This is the reality, he says. Yes, at some points, as I told you for now, it is. But again, this war is not forever as the Russian regime and as Orban's regime in Hungary. The main thing is to continue to support Ukraine in a long-term perspective, so at the proper time Ukraine might take all of its territories without significant fight with the Russian forces, who would be very busy in putting together the government in Russia itself. It seems like we have the Russian spies or just stupid politics in Ukrainian parliament. So this woman today, Maria Bezuglova, or what's her surname, Bezuglaya, says that Zaluzhny should be dismissed from his position. <laughs> Why? Because the Ukrainian army command uh, haven't presented the plan for 2024 how they want to regain the territories or defend Ukraine. So as for me, clearly she works for the Russian Federation or she just spread the Russian propaganda inside Ukrainian society, wanting to split our people. Without Zaluzhny, I believe that Kyiv would have been occupied by the Russian army. Valery Zaluzhny managed to organize the defense of Ukrainian capital and basically of Ukraine. He does a lot of the positive stuff, but the Ukrainian politicians just spread the nonsense to have some points, but what kind of the points she got? The most terrible thing that she is in the president's party, the servant of people. Could it be the visible sign of the conflict between president and our main general commander Zaluzhny? Well, everything might be. But the Ukrainian society totally disagrees with her opinion. Zaluzhny should stay in power. Actually, the rating of Zaluzhny is even higher than Vladimir Zelensky's himself. And the Russian propaganda start to actively spread this information that we have the conflict between politicians and our military. It is very bad. I'm sure that dismissing Zaluzhny would be the biggest mistake from the Ukrainian government or Ukrainian politicians. Under his personal command, I'm sure that the Ukrainian army will be able to win this war. So any accusations towards him, I think, is the Russian propaganda. Now the Ukrainian society and the Ukrainian army should be as united as never before because Russia accumulated enough forces to start the new country attacks on a different directions, not only on the south and not only on the east, as our one of the main generals, Sergei Naev, says. He told about this possible wearing to the ABC News in his interview that Russia continued to accumulate the military force for the future attacks. At the same time, he says that we are getting ready for this possible scenario, we are building the defense lines, we are putting lots of the mines, and we go through the training, says the general Naive. Russia has the huge losses in their long-range air defense systems like S-400 and S-300. That's why they are moving new units from Kaliningrad Oblast, which is boring the NATO countries, to Ukrainian front lines. I already showed you several of the videos how Russia tries to reposition those units. It means that Russia is still in lack of the resources to renew their air defense systems and Ukraine has the special tools to eliminate those. My friends, please don't forget to press the like to this video, it helps me a lot. Also, please check out my personal link in the video description just below, where you may find the Atlas VPN Premium with a Black Friday discount. The deal is time limited, so hurry up to join the club. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are, and have a great.
time.